Last year in 2022, I made a language learning tier list in which I was basically ranking languages of different levels. This year, I wanted to do the same thing again, but this time I realized that I could actually just make my own tier list as opposed to use someone else's tier list, and it's quite easy to make them as well. So I made my own tier list with languages I wanted to put in the tier list myself. And so we have 80 languages here today, which are these 80 that you can hopefully see on screen right now. And I'm going to be putting them into the tier list above, ranking them from the different levels I've got here. Already speak, learning, want to learn, would be cool, maybe, no interest right now. The video I made last year was 40 minutes long. I don't want this one to be anywhere near as long if I can help it. So we're just going to go straight into the list and let's just go for it. Hopefully teaching some bits about each language along the way if I know anything about them worth teaching. Afrikaans, a Germanic language spoken in South Africa, which is very related to Dutch. Interesting language, I've never really properly looked into it. It's one of those languages where it's like, I'm pretty sure if you can speak Dutch, you can probably pretty much speak Afrikaans, or it would be a lot easier for you to learn. I do think it'd be cool, I guess. I don't really have much of an opinion on Afrikaans, to be fair. I don't really want to learn it, as of right now at least, I'd rather learn Dutch. Amharic, spoken in Ethiopia. Uh, that's about all I know about Amharic, to be honest. It's a bit of an ancient language. I think it's like 3,000 years old, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to put Amharic in the no interest right now. And I've just realised I need to put W on the right now. Arabic. It's a really, really cool, interesting language. Very popular. A lot of people around the world actually study Arabic. A lot of people speak it as their mother tongue. There's so many different variants of Arabic and obviously you've got modern standard Arabic as well, which is like the biblical Arabic and then you have all these other versions. So it's a very difficult language to learn just because of the amount of different like types of the language that there are or versions of the language or whatever wording you want to put there. I certainly would like to learn one kind of Arabic someday. I've tried to do like some little simple bits of study in Arabic already. So I know a little bit about like the way the language works, but not really that much. And a lot of people who learn Arabic say that it's quite a beautiful language when they really get into it. All that in mind, I want to put Arabic in the want to learn. That'll be want to learn someday, but not right now because I'm busy enough as I am. Moving on into Aramaic. Aramaic the only thing I know about it is apparently it's the language that Jesus spoke. I've got no interest right now to learn or study Aramaic. By the way, these are all color coded in regards to like which language family they're in. I kind of ran out of colors after a while and I kind of messed up a little bit along the way. But for the most part, these are meant to be colored in their language families like Romance or Germanic, for example. Don't hate on me if they're like a little bit wrong because when it got to the Asian languages, I decided to sort of just group all Asian languages together. Just wanted to make that clear if you're wondering what the colours were. Armenian has a unique writing system. I know of Armenian more so than I ever would because I like the band System of a Down. They're all of Armenian descent and the music also reflects on the Armenian genocide and other bits surrounding the Armenian culture. If it weren't for that band, I wouldn't have really known anything about Armenian culture. Not like I know much anyway, but I wouldn't have even known that much. It's an interesting looking language. I wouldn't mind studying it to like a certain degree, but I don't feel like at the moment I'd want to study it to like a really good level or anything, but certainly would be cool to, to study it. I'm going to put it in the would be cool. Basque, language isolate. No other language is apparently related to Basque. It is a language spoken in Spain, in the Basque region, which is in like the north of Spain. It's quite interesting, unique in its own way. I've never really had much of a desire to learn Basque, to be honest. There's also some like other really weird variants of this language or like this language has evolved into other weird languages like Icelandic Basque Pidgin, for example, which I haven't put on this list, but that's just a completely like random mix of two languages. Needless to say, Basque isn't a language that I've ever really wanted to study before. It would go in the maybe actually for now. I don't really have any interest for it, to be fair. So I might actually move it down because it's not really a maybe. I have no interest in learning Basque right now. Bengali, I'm going to put it in the maybe. It's not really the the most exciting language for me to learn, but at the same time, like it's spoken by a lot of people around the world. I'm pretty sure it's really spoken here in the UK as well, We're in the top like five languages. I could be wrong with that. Maybe it's the top 10. But either way, Bengali is spoken quite, quite a lot around the world, and that's most because there's a lot of Bengali speakers by mother tongue. You go in the maybe just because it's a very popular language. Bosnian, onto our first Slavic language in the list. Out of all the Slavic languages, is one of the least likely for me to learn, to be fair. 
I'm going to put it in the maybe as well because there are other Slavic languages that I would much rather put my time towards than Bosnian for the moment. Breton, if you didn't know, Breton is a really small Cornish language which is spoken in like the northwest portion of France. It's a very old language and it's going to be on the no interest for now because again like Breton is like almost a dead language, not quite, there are some speakers, but they mostly speak either Breton or French in that region, and it's only in a small region of France anyway that it's spoken, so it's not the most exciting for me personally. BSL, or British Sign Language, this one's actually quite a useful language, because obviously you are able to speak to people who can't hear, it's a different kind of language, obviously you have to speak with your hands and communicate with your hand signs and mouthing words and stuff, I think it's really interesting. And it's something that I genuinely really need to learn one day. It would be cool. I kind of want to put it in the want, want to learn because one day I do actually genuinely really want to learn BSL. But just right now, I really enjoy learning like written language as opposed to like hand gesture language. How would you even describe uh, like sign languages apart from just sign language? I just have too much fun like studying languages with words and speaking the language because that's where I find most fun. But obviously, hand gestures and things like that are certainly another way of communicating which I think is again like a really useful thing to learn. Out of all of the Slavic languages I believe Bulgarian is the only one that doesn't have cases which makes it a lot easier to learn even though it's written in this Cyrillic script which is the script that the Russians basically write in with a few modifications of the letters. The fact that the language has no cases which means the grammar is slightly easier which means it would be a lot more easier for someone like myself who is English by birth to learn a Slavic language with no cases is because that is a very confusing like thing in general to learn grammatically for anyone who comes from a language that doesn't use the cases basically it's a very confusing thing I'm still struggling with learning cases myself even after more than two years of study in Polish and so yeah Bulgarian would be cool for sure it's not the top again of my Slavic languages but I definitely would like to learn Bulgarian one day just to see how it compares to other Slavic languages and if that's really true that because there are no cases that would be easier to learn just overall and easier to be able to make like sentences and that kind of thing. Cantonese would be cool. I'm going to put it there. Essentially, it's one of the main Chinese languages. Catalan, out of the main Romance languages, this is my least wanting to learn language from the Romance languages. So I'm going to put it in the maybe, but I don't really have much of an interest for it. But like, because it's quite close to my understanding to like French and Spanish, Maybe one day it will just be easy enough for me to pick up Catalan and just study it for a year or something. Coptic. No interest right now. Essentially, Coptic, to my understanding, is the one of the main languages spoken in Egypt. It's an original and really old Egyptian language. It's sort of being overtaken by Arabic, so Arabic is more spoken in Egypt than Coptic. It's specifically the Egyptian Arabic dialect that's spoken in Egypt, but Coptic is like the second main language spoken in Egypt to my understanding. Cornish, part of the same language group as Breton, which are both in the Celtic languages. Cornish is a minority language in the UK, I think it's spoken by around about 20,000 people down in the southwest of the UK in Cornwall and probably nearby areas as well. But mostly in Cornwall, it's quite an old language, I don't really know much more about it to be honest. I'm going to put it in the maybe because it's it interests me, but I've never really given it the time to like look into, so yeah, uh, who knows. But for now, I'm just going to put it into the maybe. Croatian, I'm going to put it in the want to learn, I think. Croatian's a really interesting language. It's similar to other Slavic languages. Just by looking at Croatian when it's written down, it has some very interesting consonant clusters and stuff, which I personally really enjoy just looking at consonant clusters and words without many vowels because it really confuses the English brain and I quite like that confusion and that like mystique about languages like that. So automatically like Croatian is quite high up on my list just because of that. It's just interesting to look at. I think Croatia as a country as well is very beautiful and I would like to study the language at some point in the future to understand their culture better and also take the opportunity to visit the country because I've never been to Croatia. Czech I'm going to also put it up into the want to learn. Czechia as a country, again, is very beautiful. Uh, the language itself is quite interesting. It looks similar-ish to Polish. I can differentiate them quite easily because obviously I'm studying Polish. And also Czech has a lot of like accents, if you want to call them that, diacritic marks or 
whatever they're actually called above a lot of their characters and their letters in the language which kind of makes it easy to differentiate from other Slavic languages as well. Looks similar-ish I guess in a way to Croatian I think but in general I love the country the food's amazing and like the way of life and everything and whenever you like something about a country like that that automatically makes you want to learn the language more especially for me you know someone who enjoys looking at languages for sure the Czech language is a very beautiful one and I really would like to look into it more one day when I look at Czech from my knowledge of Polish I can kind of pick up on certain words even if they're not quite the same as Polish but you can kind of get a gist for words and I feel like when my Polish is at a better level Czech will be kind of the next best language for me to try and look into or to study in terms of the Slavic languages. So I'm really excited to one day be able to look into Czech. The only reason I don't look at, into it for now is just because I don't want to disrupt my study of Polish. Oh, we're looking pretty even on the board so far. We've got Danish up next. Danish is a Germanic language, as I've highlighted in this dark blue. And Danish has like a weird like sound I'm not going to try and pronounce right now. But if you ever listen to Danish... It's got like a weird, uh, what people try to describe as like a potato in the mouth. I feel like Danish is one of the harder Germanic languages to learn from my own point of view. And I feel like it's one of the least likely for me to want to study just because I just don't have that much interest in it. So I'm going to put Danish in the no interest for now. Unfortunately, it would be cool to learn Danish, of course, but there's just other Germanic languages I would like to dive into first. So it's going to be many, many years before I think I'm going to look into Danish personally. However, Dutch, on the other hand, is a language I feel like I would love to look into sometime soon. Before I pick up any new languages, I want to kind of get more acquainted with the languages I'm studying so far because I have my plate very full right now but when I get into the point of where I pick a new language I think Dutch is going to be up there and for that I'm going to put Dutch in the want to learn it is a little bit annoying that if you go to like the Netherlands and you're trying to speak Dutch if you're learning Dutch unless your Dutch is like perfect they're going to speak to you in English and that can kind of make you a little bit like demotivated to learn the language I just feel like there's some like sort of unique aspect about the Dutch language and I quite like the way of life and everything else with the Netherlands. The Dutch language itself, I feel like, wouldn't be too difficult to learn from like my own experience from learning it before or looking into the language before. There's a lot of words that are certainly cognates to English and that makes it a lot easier to learn Dutch. Estonian, I'm going to put it in the maybe. Estonian is a language I've never really looked into too much. Not a lot of language apps that actually have Estonian. There's a couple that I can think of. It's one of the least likely languages I would like to learn out of like that whole region. Like if you're looking at it geographically, I'm going to put it in the maybe because maybe one day I'll look into it and I'll discover something about the language. But for now, like it's just not really up there on my radar of like want to learn in languages. I'm going to put Filipino in the would be cool. It's an Asian language. It's obviously spoken in the Philippines. It's related to Spanish. I think it's like 40% similar vocabulary to Spanish, which is quite cool. Finnish, similarly to Estonian, I don't have much of like an interest, but there is a little bit. Like Finnish looks insanely difficult. If you're looking at grammar alone, like Finnish has like 15 cases. And so that makes it like really difficult in itself. It makes it really hard to get the motivation to want to learn a language with like so many few or well, so few speakers in the country as well. So you rarely come across Finnish people in my experience. And in the small amount of time that I've spent studying Finnish, it's been nothing but a struggle. I'm sure eventually get over that, but like it's a quite a difficult language in my experience and it's not one that I really have much of an interest, but there's a little bit for it at the moment. French, currently, I'm gonna put it in the learning. I mean, I am currently learning it. I kind of learned it like a year ago at the moment. I was like studying it for a good two or three months. I can't remember exactly, but I was studying it for a while. I kind of gave up a little bit because I was just focusing on my other languages that I'm studying as well. The thing with French is that I was able to comfortably put it to the side because I was able to already like read newspaper articles and things in French with very little translation. I could kind of get an idea of what was being said or what I was reading because of my knowledge of English, my knowledge of Spanish and just my small amount of knowledge that I have in French from like school and stuff. And so all of that combined, like French isn't really that difficult of a language. You just have to understand how to like decipher it, I guess. Even though I do study French occasionally, I decided to kind of put it on the back burner while I focus way more on my Spanish. And then 
once I feel comfortable enough, I will pick up on my French and I genuinely feel like my French will just skyrocket because of already my knowledge of like vocabulary in Spanish, in English, and also my around about 6,000 words known in French if you're going according by link. French is in the learning, but it's only just in the learning. I was learning it, then I gave up and I've taken a break and I'm kind of in the weird like in between at the moment where I'm like, I much prefer the other three languages I'm studying over French at the moment. Georgian has an interesting script, which immediately sort of brings me to want to study it more. I don't know much else about Georgian. Obviously I know where the country is located and things, but in terms of the language, I don't know any words. And it's, I forget the name of the language family that it's in, but it's in quite an isolated language family as well, which would make it quite difficult. I also understand some of the grammar in Georgian is ridiculous. There is some interest, I'm gonna put it in the would be cool. German, not much to say. I wanna learn it. Sometimes I go through periods where I'm like actually learning German. Other times I'm not, it just really depends to be honest. German's a very interesting language for me. On and off I've been like sort of exposed to the German language for many, many years now. I've been to Germany a handful of times. I've been to Austria once and I'm going again this December. German is a really cool language. I, I find a lot of beauty in the language as well. I like listening to German music and yeah, I feel like just slow exposure over time has kind of made me understand German to a good degree. I can't really speak it at all. I can have like some very basic conversations. I just like the way the language is constructed and it's quite unique in its own way. And so it's definitely in the want to learn. One day I will decide that German will be my language that I decide to actually focus on fully and just study and learn the language. Greek, I also want to put that in the want to learn, not as much as some of the other languages in this list, I might say, but Greek is quite an important language historically. There's just something about it I think would be really interesting. I feel like if you learn Greek, you would learn a lot more about your own, well, for me at least, my own language, because obviously English is heavily influenced by Greek. If you just look at all the words that end in phobia, you're automatically going to know what these words mean if you know Greek. And there's also a whole bunch of like other words as well in English that are just of Greek origin. When I'm studying Spanish, I realized that words that end in M-A, such as el problema, el tema, el poema, which are, you know, normally should be feminine words, but these are masculine words because they end in M-A, and that's because they come from Greek, and there's a whole thing there, but like Greek keeps popping up when I'm studying languages, and I don't know, there's like this, again, really interesting, like, mystique when it comes to Greek, and I really would like to learn more of the language. I've never really given Greek much of a chance. At, at the very least, I think it'd be cool to be able to read the Greek alphabet, but obviously I would like to study it more than just an alphabet. Greenlandic, no interest right now. I think one day maybe I would like to learn Greenlandic to some degree. It's not really that useful, to be honest. It's only spoken in Greenland. It's one of the Inuit languages. There's a whole bunch of Inuit languages, and to be honest, like none of them I'm really that interested in. They do look quite interesting just because of how difficult they look. Like if you try and read any word in any like Inuit language, like good luck. But there's something about it that like kind of draws me to it, but certainly not for now. There's a whole load of other languages I'd like to learn. Gujarati, which is an Indian language. I'm just going to put it in the maybe. I don't know much about Indian languages individually, to be honest. I know the names of them, but I don't really know much more than that. Gujarati, I know the script, how it looks, but I don't really know any words. I don't really have much of an interest to in learning it just because I'd I have more of an interest in learning a language if I have some kind of tie with the country or the language or people from that place. So if I know somebody speaks the language automatically, that will bump Gujarati, for example, from a maybe up into the what to learn, for example. So I'm gonna put it there. I feel like it's one of the more popular Indian languages in terms of more common Indian languages, so like most spoken for now, it's in the maybe. Hausa, I don't really know much about Hausa, I'm not going to lie to you here. I know it's spoken in Africa. I can't remember off the top of my head like which countries it's spoken in or which country. I don't know if it's one or multiple countries. I'm gonna put it in the no interest right now. Hawaiian, I went to Hawaii recently and I've got this book, it is thin, but it has a bunch of Hawaiian words in it. I kind of am interested in Hawaiian just because I visited Hawaii. Uh, unfortunately, not a lot of people in Hawaii speak Hawaiian, or at least where I visited in Maui and Oahu. That's because of like a historical thing where, you know, the language is banned for a bit. The only Hawaiian that people really speak is Aloha and Mahalo. I th feel like it'd be cool to like learn some. I'm gonna put it in the would be cool. I don't really have much of an interest to learn Hawaiian, to be honest, but it would be cool to learn it. It would be cool to be able to speak some Hawaiian and I have spent time before trying to study learning Hawaiian and uh, I kind of forget a lot of words. Hebrew is going in the maybe. One day I would like to look more into Hindi, 
for now I'm going to put it in the would be cool. Out of all the Indian languages, Hindi would be like my number one that I would want to actually learn. Hungarian, I'm going to put it in the would be cool. Again, it's a very difficult language for the amount of people that are in Hungary. In my experience, every single word in Hungarian is like super difficult to learn. And so because of that, it's a little bit off-putting, but also they have 18 cases, which is even worse than any other language on this list to my knowledge anyway. Just because there's so many cases, it, it just makes it even worse to try and like figure out and always like, I'm assuming, tripping over your words because you don't know which word to use. Icelandic, again, would be cool. It's got like some older letters. It's got that weird D looking letter. That's a letter that used to be in the English language, maybe Middle English or Old English. I don't know which variant. It used to be a TH sound in English. It's still a TH sound in Icelandic. So if you see it, it's pronounced like a th. That's all I really know about Icelandic. It's again, one of these really ridiculously hard languages to learn for a few thousand people that live in the country and who can speak it worldwide. So, you know, it, you really have to like the language in order to want to actually study it. Igbo, not too sure on where it's spoken. I know it's somewhere Africa. No interest right now. Again, I know it's one of the more popular languages in Africa. I don't necessarily have any other information on Igbo. Indonesian will be a maybe. I don't have much of a desire to learn Indonesian, but I do understand that like for people from like the UK, USA, like people who speak English, they typically would like to learn Indonesian first or Malay first, for example, to learn their first Asian language because it's written in the Latin script. And because of that, it's just a lot easier. And I think Indonesian by like uh, grammar is like one of the easiest languages to learn as well. Also in the Gaelic family languages, uh, Irish would certainly be cool. I'm gonna put it in the would be cool. I don't really have much of a desire to learn Irish, I guess, but like it would be cool to like learn some more. I you know Pokemon. Italian will go in the would be cool. I'm not actually all that interested in Italian. A lot of people would like to learn Italian for different reasons, including the the architecture of Italy, the history of Italy. Also, some people just like to say they like to learn Italian because of the sort of the way that the language sounds. It sounds like a song, the flow of the language, whatever you like to call it. Quite an interesting language. I don't really have much of an interest in it right now. In terms of Romance languages, I've got my plate full with Spanish and French. Japanese or Nihongo is in the learning. My Japanese is going really slow. It's quite a difficult language for me to study, but I'm determined that one day I will actually just be good at Japanese, at least to some degree. It's just an interesting language. I've loved the culture of the Japanese people. I think the country itself is quite a quite an awesome country the way it's run. There's a lot of things I agree with when it comes to Japanese culture. I like a lot of the food and so yeah, I don't know. There's just a lot of things with like, the history and the culture and things that I enjoy with Japan and then also the language itself is just a very uniquely difficult language and I just thought it'd be like a really interesting challenge and challenge it is because it is ridiculous how difficult Japanese is. Kannada, uh, maybe it's an Indian language. Uh, I don't really have much more information on Kannada. Korean is going straight up into the want to learn. As basically, as soon as my Japanese gets to a, a decent enough level in like five or 10 years from now, whenever it is, I would love to then just look into the other Asian languages such as Korean. It's actually got more of a structured alphabet compared to Japanese. Latin is spoken by about 20,000 people worldwide. It is not native to any particular country. Of course, we all know that Latin is essentially a dead language, even though it's not quite because it is spoken by 20,000 people worldwide. All are obviously people who decide to learn Latin for one reason or another. It's the only reason really that I would like to learn Latin is because I'd like to maybe one day read original Latin texts in Latin without the translations because translations you can lose a lot of meaning. I feel like if you learn Latin it would make it a lot easier to learn like other romance languages. I feel like if you learn Latin as well you'd learn a lot more about English as well because of the way that words work and like where words come from and everything. I just think Latin would be a cool language to learn in general and it's going in the would be cool. Latvian and Lithuanian both are going to go in the would be cool. I've always got this kind of uh, interest for Latvian and Lithuanian to be honest. To my knowledge they're the only two languages from the Baltic family group that are still going today. All the other languages from that family group have died and Latvian and Lithuanian both have like interests to me. I would like to look more into those languages, but for the moment, there's not really much resources for me to study them from. If I put Bosnian in the maybe, I'm gonna have to also put Macedonian in the maybe as well. Both similar enough languages where if you learn one, you'll know the other. Malay as well is going in the maybe because 
of all the Asian languages, Malay is actually one of the least likely for me to learn personally. Malayalam is another Indian language. I'm going in the no interest for now. Maltese is a language in the Semitic family group, which is similar to like Arabic, Coptic and languages such as that. Obviously these languages which are highlighted in this sort of yellowy tint. Maltese would be a maybe just because it'd be cool to learn but there's so few people who speak Maltese only from the country of Malta to my understanding and that's only got like a few hundred thousand people maximum. I think it'd be cool but I feel like if I wanted to learn something like Maltese I would definitely have to learn Arabic first to make it a lot easier for me to learn Maltese. Maltese is however written in the Latin script not in the I guess Arabic script so it would be easier for me to read in Maltese. Mandarin is going up in the want to learn. I would love to learn Mandarin one day. Manx, interesting language again part of this same language family as Cornish, as Breton, Irish etc. I'll put it in the maybe. It's spoken on the Isle of Man which is sandwiched in between the UK or I guess like England and like Northern Ireland. It's just like a really really tiny island which is called the Isle of Man. And that is where Manx is spoken. Marathi, I'm going to put it in the no interest for now. Norwegian, we'll go in the maybe. Don't really have much of a an opinion on the language, to be honest. Very similar to Swedish. Odia, again going in the no interests. Polish is going right up to the top in the learning. I would love to put it in the already speak, but that would be a lie. I can speak some Polish. I've recently sort of not been studying all that much and so my Polish is a little bit rusty in terms of reading, speaking, whatever. I would love to properly get back into Polish but it's only been like the last few months that I've kind of slowed down on it and that's only because of like life getting in the way. It's my first Slavic language that I'm studying and it's kind of my my doorway into the Slavic languages. I have like very much like a uh, a soft spot for the Polish language, also the country. Polish is going to be my gateway drug into Croatian and Czech and Bulgarian and all these other crazy Slavic languages. Portuguese would be cool. I don't think I'm going to put it in the want to learn because again, French and Spanish, after that, I want to just sort of leave Romance languages for the meantime. Punjabi, maybe, is very popular here in the UK, so it'd be useful, but no particular interest as such, but it's a maybe. Romanian would be cool. You know what, the thing I find interesting about Romanian is that it's basically, it's a Romance language, but it's mixed with Slavic languages as well. So it's, it's literally a, a mix between a Romance and Slavic language. And there you have Romanian. Russian, want to learn. I would love to learn Russian one day. It's a very, very well spoken language across the world. Loads of people study Russian. Russian literature is quite a really popular thing as well amongst learners. Uh, it's one of the six languages of the UN or whatever. Just a very popular language, similar to Mandarin, I guess. Well-spoken. I would love to be able to understand the language properly. There's a, there's a lot of reasons why I like to learn Russian, but again, because I'm learning Polish, I don't want to like interfere with my Polish by trying to learn Russian as well. Very similar languages in a lot of ways, and so it would confuse my brain while I'm trying to learn them. Scots is a language spoken in like the southern area of Scotland, I think around Glasgow area and like sort of Edinburgh, that sort of way. Anywhere that's underneath like the highlands of Scotland basically. It's a Germanic language. It's very similarly sounding to English but it is classed as its own language. I'm going to put it in the would be cool. Scottish Gaelic or Gaelic, I never know which one to say. Uh, I don't actually know how to pronounce Scottish Gaelic or Gaelic but I'll say both so I don't get it wrong. This one is another language spoken in Scotland, but this time, instead of it being spoken in like the southern region of Scotland, this one's spoken in like the highlands of Scotland and sort of the more northern part of Scotland. This is more true to its roots. This is not a Germanic language like Scots, but instead Scottish Gaelic or Gaelic is a Celtic language, which means it's similarly related to some degree to like Irish and Cornish, Manx and Breton. Serbian is similar to Macedonian and Bosnian. It's got to go in the maybe. These three languages are so similar that you can't really differentiate them too much. If you know just Serbian, you can speak to people of Macedonian and Bosnian descent and you can like understand them and speak between your languages. That comes down to history and the way those three places used to be one country and now they're three separate countries. Shona, African language spoken in various countries, one of which I know is Zimbabwe. Maybe it's fine for Shona. It's de definitely not one that I'm gonna pick up anytime too soon. Slovak, 
is going to go in the would be cool. Slovene is going to go into the maybe. Somali, spoken in Somalia. I'm just going to put that in the maybe. Spanish, I've got to go all the way to the top. Already speak. I'm putting it in the already speak. I certainly could speak it a lot better than I do now. I do not claim to speak it fluently, but I do speak weekly with a language exchange partner of mine. And we do speak in Spanish as well as English, which funny enough, I forgot to put English on this list, but obviously... English would be a language I would put up here next to Spanish as well. So, I mean, I can get by in Spanish to some degree with broken grammar and whatever else, to some degree in quite a lot of different topics, I think. But I really would love to be able to improve my knowledge more in Spanish. But I'm putting it in the already speak because to some degree I can speak Spanish and I have multiple times spoken Spanish for periods of like an hour or more uh, each time. But I really need to get a lot more speaking practice in. That's, I think, the main thing for me to really improve my Spanish is just to constantly speak for long periods of time. Swahili is kind of like the lingua franca of Africa. It's very popular in Africa, so I'm going to put it in the would be cool. I've done some Swahili study before. The language has kind of started to make sense to me when I was studying it. I've forgotten a lot of it now, so I can't really say much, if anything, in Swahili. But yeah, very interesting language for sure. Swedish. I would like to learn Swedish one day. I'm going to put it in want to learn. Okay, we're on our last row of languages. You can see all the remaining languages. Tamazig. Going in the main... Actually, I'm going to put Tamazig in the would be cool. Purely because of the writing system. It's very cool, unique, kind of ancient in a way. I don't know how old the language is, but it looks very ancient the way that the characters are. Spoken in Morocco. Maybe some neighboring countries as well. But certainly, I know it's spoken in Morocco. Tamil is going in the maybe. And Telugu is going in the no interest right now. Thai would be cool. I don't know if I would like to study Thai to the degree of like being able to speak the language fluently just because it's, I think it's a quite a big commitment to learn Thai. I feel like it's a very difficult language just from the looks of it, but certainly the language, the script, the alphabet looks, looks really cool. And I would like to one day look into it, I think. Ukrainian, I think I'm going to put that into want to learn. Urdu, if I'm going to put Hindi, where did I put Hindi? Up there in the would be cool. Urdu's got to go there as well because they're basically the same language. Vietnamese, I'm going to go in the maybe. I think I'd like to learn Mandarin first and then once I've learned Mandarin, Vietnamese would make more sense because of all the tones and whatnot that goes on in Vietnamese. And Vietnamese is written in the Latin script, but it's written in the Latin script with tonal like marks on the on the characters. On my last video that I did of this a year ago, somebody commented that I didn't even have Welsh on the list and that was correct because Welsh wasn't even on the list because it was a pre-made list, not one that I made myself and like today. And I was like, oh yeah, that's true. Welsh would be cool. I would put in the want to learn, but like to want to learn it to me says I want to learn these languages to a decent level, not just like a few weeks, but like a decent level. And Welsh, I always go to Wales. I'm in Wales like a lot. And so that automatically makes me want to like learn the language more. I bought a book in Welsh as well. I've, I've not even looked at it and probably won't ever look at it, to be honest. Uh, not for a long time, at least anyway. So I've actually been to Wales many times and I continue to go to Wales quite often as well. It's fairly close to me. It's only about 80 miles away from where I live. So it's only a couple hours to drive to Wales. Yeah, I go there all the time. I love the place. Corsa, uh, no interest. Yiddish, I don't have much of an interest for it, but it'd be cool to like, if I knew German and some other like Germanic languages, like Yiddish maybe would be also uh, interesting to look into as well. Yoruba is spoken in Nigeria. And again, I'm going to put it in the maybe because it's a very popular language. Not one that I really have much of an interest in learning myself. But again, I think if you're going to study languages in Africa, Europe has got to be one that like is certainly there for you to at least look at. And the final language, which I'm going to say basically the same thing as I did for Yoruba is Zulu. Zulu is spoken in South Africa, in Zimbabwe. I I'm going to put it in the maybe as well. Zulu and Yoruba, I just don't know enough about the languages to properly like give them any higher of a, of a thing in this list. But I certainly wouldn't mind studying them properly because as soon as I studied Swahili, it goes up in the list. This is my final list. English would be up here next to Spanish right now, but um, I, I just kind of forgot about my own mother tongue. So I'm going to just pretend that English is there next to Spanish. As you can see, French, Japanese and Polish are languages that I'm currently studying 
that I don't feel comfortable to say that I can actually speak. Although I feel like Polish in a few years could be a bit more likely to be in the already speak. Realistically, you know, there are going to be languages here that I never get a chance to look at uh, because life's too short and there's too many languages to learn. Um, but that's what I find fun about languages is that you can never complete it and therefore there's always something to chase. But yeah, this is just a bit of fun. This is just basically my wish list of languages that if I could learn in a particular order, this would essentially be the order that I would learn these languages in. I'll catch all of you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day and peace out.